up louder till your brains are like chowder because it's the nastiest of all. Headbangers fall. <laughs> Look out, Madonna. A new breed of rock and roll fans has arrived. They're called Headbangers, and they're making heavy metal music more popular than ever. Heavy metal's renaissance began when Bon Jovi's hit Living on a Prayer shot to the top of Billboard's charts. The album seemed to clear the way for dozens of other heavy metal groups to come pouring out of the woodwork. Groups with names like Helix and Faster Pussycat. At Tower Records in New York's Greenwich Village, record bins are packed with albums from groups like Rat and Twisted Sister. And according to Vinny Cavazos, who buys heavy metal for that huge record chain, these albums are selling. Maybe one quarter of what the store puts out, like in category of music, could be, you could say, is rock, hard rock. There's people who like loud, aggressive, uh, rude rock and roll. Heavy metal is nothing new. ACDC made a huge splash in the early 80s. And their popularity sprang out of hard rock's deeper roots with performers like Jimi Hendrix in the 60s. But it was Kiss and their bizarre brand of rock theater in the 70s that set the stage for today's era of heavy metal madness. Ace Frehley was part of that group. Kiss was a, a big influence on hard rock and heavy metal fans in the 70s, and I was part of that. And uh, it just got to the point where I just became self-destructive and also, you know, decided I had to leave the group if I was going to survive. Ace's departure from Kiss came during the off years of heavy metal in the early 80s. But now that metal's back, so is Ace with a solo album. Kiss is also making a comeback, this time without the makeup, and they're selling better than ever. It's almost as good as sex. I'm into rock and roll, and I always have been, and this is the way I'll always be. Good music, good people, fun. Uh, it's basically, you know, a scene here every Wednesday. Wednesday night is Tommy Gunn's Metal Night at New York's Cat Club. Bands play, friends drink, and socialize, but mostly people come to this scene to be seen and to check out who's in the crowd. Long hair. Long hair. Long hair, lots of long hair. Crowd here tonight is a very glam crowd. It's a very nice looking crowd. They dress up, they have fun. It's a good party crowd. It's like, why not be a superhero all over again? These metal fans are glam because they design their own fashions, clothes, and hairstyles. But according to Amy Christie, publisher of Hard Rock Magazine, heavy metal comes in many forms. There's three basic kinds of heavy metal. We have like glam, glam bands, like what you see here tonight, basically. Thrash metal, which is real heavy and hard metal. And then there's just your basic heavy metal, like Bon Jovi. That's crossover radio stuff. Are you ready, boys? And as this group at the Cat Club listens to the crooning riffs of Smash Gladys, the crossover popularity of heavy metal is apparent all the way from nine to fivers to club hoppers. This is all we have. <laughs> and the mainstream appeal of heavy metal screams not only from the nightclubs and radios, but every week on MTV's wow, Headbangers so Ball. Oh, metal rules for another hour here with videos from... Juice the program Bruce. provides oh, the perfect forum for groups like Grim Reaper, Suicidal uh, Tendencies, and Metallica to get the exposure they might not otherwise be able to get. And uh, right now here's some classic metal from Black Sabbath. And rockers like Dave Spitz of Black Sabbath say that their unique brand of rock has something to offer its most unique fans. It's music. It's like our parents listen to Frank Sinatra and bands like that. Okay, they enjoy that. They can't relate to heavy metal. Heavy metal will never peter out, never die. And as for metal's longevity, even ex-Kiss star Ace Frehley doesn't know how long heavy metal will ride on this current wave of success. It's probably going to continue on the way it's going, and it might even get worse. <laughs> Only the big guy knows. <laughs>